We only play Santa Cruz guitars. We only play Santa Cruz guitars. Richard, thank you so much for sitting here with me. Um, this is a dream come true. You're going to help me make the, the choices I need to make, that we need to make to build me a custom guitar. You're going to keep me. One of my from, favorites too. Yeah, you're going to keep me from making terrible decisions out of my own ignorance and my own kind of uh, hubris. On <laughs> well, you set me up to sound like an expert. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, so let's get started. Welcome to my tree. Does this footage, does it look like the Blair Witch Project? I know. We don't know where we are. 30 minutes ago, this would have been crazy. Beautiful, the golden light coming oh, through here. yeah. But that's not bad. That's not bad at all. I got a guitar for Christmas, you know, begging, begging, begging. The Beatles had just come out. Um, I was in junior high school, and it just it seemed like the coolest thing to do. So that didn't quite take. But then when I got a sweet on a girl around sophomore in high school and she loved folk music, <laughs> it, was, it was done. I had to learn how to play guitar. And so that worked. You know, I, I learned uh, 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 Peter, Paul, Mary stuff, Dylan, and uh, Warner Hart. And uh, after that, I, I really didn't have to play guitar anymore. You know, that, that right, part yeah. worked. Um, but it, it, um, it, really, it really stuck with me. And um, uh, there was a couple of breakthroughs in my, my music where guitar really became my way of expressing myself. You know, we're not the most articulate when we're like uh, 15 years old, especially boys, unless we're talking to each other. Right. right? Yeah. And, and <laughs> in that, code and punches. Yeah, and stuff. yeah, 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 yeah right. right. In that in code. Yeah. So, um, man, could you be a sensitive guy, you know, speaking through your guitar? Absolutely. Um, and I was playing guitar you know, thinking about a song. And I seriously had this flash thought. It's like, somebody makes these. I wonder how they do it. <laughs> yeah, right. And it's like I you would, never considered that before. No, it was yeah. just like, wow, somebody makes this. How did they do that? So the next thought was, I'm going to find out. Yeah. And I'm going to take it apart and, and see. So my father, um, you know, I bought the guitar with money I made on my paper route. Uh, so he didn't, didn't really have much to say. He was amused. I took it apart. My mother, on the other hand, was um, a reference librarian. Before the internet, she was Google. Right, you know, yeah, she, right. You, went, you waited a couple of weeks, but she got the stuff for you. So her observation was, um, let's go get the books that show you how to put that back together. Right, yeah. And at that time, uh, there was truly nothing in print on steel string guitars that I knew about. And, and there was, my mother would find it, right? Yeah. But, um, and there's not much on classical, especially in English. But what there was a body of knowledge on was violin. Those guys were very secretive. But there was diaries, there was speculation, there was uh, analysis, a lot, a lot of stuff. So that's where I started. And the beautiful thing there is the violin was built for a specific sound and really high quality mm -hmm. sound. The steel string guitar, as I didn't find out till later, um, was loud enough that uh, you don't have to worry about that. Right. You know, you could make a guitar that was loud enough, get the girl, and life is good. Right, yeah. So when I decided I wanted to make a guitar, my head was full of uh, densities of wood, how you manipulate, how you do this to control Coming the from sound. The violin and there. man, what a beautiful bit of serendipity. Good morning. So when we get in here, uh, the air feels a little different. What it is, is this is the midpoint of the known guitar playing world in temperature and humidity. And uh, the wood being hydroscopic is going to take on, lose moisture, and it's going to shrink and swell. And over the width of, say, a dreadnought, we could probably get uh, three-eighths of an inch, 10 millimeters of movement, and something will come apart. You know? So, so let me re-say that. So, yeah. like, so if, you were, if you build a guitar in one part of the world, and you ship it to or carry it to another part of the world, you're going to have the, the guitar could shrink. The pieces of the guitar could shrink. The back or the different mm -hmm. things. Like or swell. Or swell. Or swell. Okay. So the secret is don't 
uh, be uh, bullied by the weather, make your own weather. So let's say Stockholm, Sweden, in the winter time, there's you know literally almost no moisture in the air, wow. and so it's drier than than a desert environment. And you send a guitar from Singapore to Stockholm, or you make it in that atmosphere, and we can shrink enough that something's going to come apart. Yeah. Uh, the joints that we make are, the glue is stronger than the wood, so they're secure. Right. Uh, but the wood itself is going to have a weak link like a chain, and that's going to pull apart. Yeah. And somewhere, you know, we guess around $5,000, people lose all sense of humor about their guitar cracking. <laughs> We're kind of staging here. We get woods from uh, literally all over the world. This is from uh, up the north. Uh, uh, you know, going up really far north in California, and this is from the uh, Nolo River um, that goes into the sea, and this was uh, a tree that would have fallen from natural causes, dipped into the river, floated down, got hung up, and in that cold water, it's an anaerobic environment, so it's not going to decay. It's preserved. It won't fossilize or petrify. Now, how did you find get a hold of that piece of wood? I mean, how do you? Um, somebody call you, Richard? There's a tree that fell. Yeah, yeah, yeah I hope so. Alert. <laughs> I'm counting on that. So all of these woods come mostly through small families that I have personal relationships with. They're not really in the food chain of the marketplace. Okay. You know, from a, a tree cut goes through a broker, ends up in a lumber yard, and is sold to us. Um, there's stories behind all of them. This is reclamation. I'm saying more of our general stock. And and this uh, would come from like the, the you know, the, the, uh, uh, the raft uh, or a bridge piling or a sunken lock. The, the become quite a variety of where this can come from, wow. but it's all old reclaimed stuff. Yeah, that's great. Here we've got a crazy selection of uh, different woods. Uh, Redwood, mahogany, Adirondack spruce from the northeast U.S. This is the 3,000 year old. Sitka spruce. 3,000 years ago. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, where did you get this? It comes from a fellow and his family that we've dealt with for many years, Brent Cole. And Brent's family really specialized in reclamation. They do, uh, uh, you know, controlled cutting uh, for other, other industry. But for us, they're looking for old stuff. Mm -hmm. And it can be um, uh, reclaimed from uh, uh, a dead tree, a sunken log. Uh, the uh, lumber industry, let's say go back 100, 150 years, uh, they would go in to cut a section of forest indiscriminately. And uh, they weren't the highest thing on the food chain. Right. There was grizzly bears out right, there. Right, yeah. uh, so they would lash together a bunch of fallen trees and these, you know, uh, uh, native uh, spruce could be, you know, blah, 12 feet in diameter. Wow. Uh, they'd lash them together, and there'd be the the cookhouse, the barber shop, and you and you slept out there, right, you yeah. know, so you didn't get eaten. And then when they were done with that, they walked away, and eventually that uh, uh, broke up, and and the outside of the tree, the bark and the living part would collect enough water to get heavy enough to sink, and they're just perfectly preserved. Wow. This was in an area, it was permafrost. So um, as uh, uh, permafrost receded with, with climate change, this, um, he, they dug this up and it was, a, you know, old log, they threw it aside to cut and burn. But when they started to cut into it, it was blue. And that was fascinating enough that they had it carbon dated at about 3,000 years old. That is insane. So again, it's not petrified, it's not fossilized, it was in the freezer preserved and it's got this stuff. So and all of these not only look beautiful in different ways, but they create different sounds, right? They create different sounds. That's a beautiful way to put it. Not better or worse, different. different yeah. These are like spices, uh, uh, flavors in, a, in a, a chef's kitchen, or colors on an artist's palette. They're personal choices. Right. There are, there's really not a right or wrong. This is a piece of wood we got conventional, like from a lumber yard. Okay. Uh, it was part of a, a Namshar trade show display cabinet. And it's, it's uh, where you buy wood. Um, it was probably cut in the last year or two, uh, dried in an oven, so it's stable, and you can make a guitar, it would be fine. In fact, large companies, uh, building for a price target, would source this stuff because um, what they pay for wood is important for right, the final yeah. price, right? And what kind of wood is this? Uh, this is uh, mahogany. Mahogany. And it's, um, uh, uh, it's awesome because mahogany is, is light, strong, stable, carves beautifully, and you can color it look like, look like any wood in the world. Wow. And it's a rainforest timber. Okay. It's really part of the problem of deforestation. Um, so uh, this is not for guitar making. 
for us. Right. Um, but it would be for most people. Yeah. I'm not dismissive of cheaper guitars because they change the world. They're yeah. a beautiful thing. Um, our service is not affordability. It's the most sophisticated tool possible yeah. to express your creativity. Well, we need right? all of it. Yeah. You know? That's right. Yeah. Amen, we do. In this, uh, buying uh, wood for a price range, we get this stuff, and it's, it's musical sounding, but it also dies quickly, and it's not as colorful as we want to start building a guitar. Bad science, I've got two different kinds of wood, two different sizes, but it's a good example. This is three years old, two years old. Okay. This is 1,500 years old. Okay. So let's listen to this. Oh, my, my goodness. <laughs> That is Are you getting beautiful. This? That is um that's music. Okay. That is amazing. So here's the difference. Oh my God. And what kind of wood is this? Um this is cedar. Now I, you know I picked these up at random and they're it's like bad science. Right, because they're this different. This is this is a more and, resonant yeah. wood inherently than this, but that ringing clarity that sustains there's two things going on in this. It is it's more resonant, so it sustains longer, and it develops uh, overtones. It's rich, full sounding. It's important to say, we don't need a 1,500-year-old piece of wood to make a great sounding guitar. Right, right. But we like to use this as a, a shameless attention-seeking device <laughs> to uh, explain the story of reclamation. Yeah. You know, We don't have to compromise our values to get the best sounding stuff in the world. Right. In fact, we're going to use this secret of the violin makers to begin uh, to use old wood. How many years since the forming of Santa Cruz? How old is the company? Um, that was 76. September of 76. We've well, actually been together a long time. Then I we? know how many years it is, because guess what? What? That's, Seven, old that's you when are. I was born, 76. <laughs> oh, wow. We, cool got a, we got somebody that, here who knows yeah. those numbers. Well, Apparently, that's the greatest year in history. Well, wow. then you, you not already figured out I was only four years old. When <laughs> started the company. Yeah. So that was 43 mm -hmm. years ago. What the premise of the company was, was never to be the next Martin uh, grow to be a, a, a big brand. It was that idea of uh, building custom guitars in, in the violin tradition and uh, just doing the best that we could, yeah. you know? And that really fit my, uh, my model. I never thought of guitar making as a business. Right, Just yeah. like I don't think of these trees as guitar parts. Um, it was what I loved to do, it was great to do, and left foot, right foot, uh, we started having to support the habit and uh, turned it into a business over time. So why the, why the culture of, of kindness and, and empathy and, and inspiration? Um, I mean, obviously it's good business, but it's got to come from somewhere deeper than that. Yeah, it does. Yeah, what's your problem? Yeah, what's your problem <laughs> with being nice to well, people? Well, it comes from a problem. Uh, both of my mentors, uh, when I asked them, uh, you know, what can I do to pay you for your time and teach? Can I, like, paint your house or build a fence or uh, bring beer? You know? Yeah, right. And, and both of them independently said, no, you just pass it on to others in the same spirit. If you're around Richard for more than five seconds, you, you, you start to appreciate his, his gentle nature, his kindness, mm -hmm. his um, care for, for employees, for care for wood. And yeah. I mean, is that part of what makes Santa Cruz special? And it really is. I mean, Richard's whole thing since I started you know, has been quality of life, you know, and he's always imparted that on to me of just like, you know, what decisions are we making? What are we doing? Is this good for the guitars? Is this good for our luthiers? Is this good for our customers, our dealers? You know, just wanting to do everything with heart, you know, and, and with time and care, you know, so it Very really cool. means a lot. Yeah. And I guess most people here are musicians? I think everyone here plays, yeah. yeah. You know, electric, acoustic, some play bass, guitar, you know, but um, we definitely have a fun Christmas party as I'm a sure. result. So, yeah, <laughs> it's great. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Not to talk about my guitar again, but you know, I just can't help myself. That's what I'm here for. To me, but boy, it's cool. The, yeah, personally, that I'm gonna that I'm gonna have, you know, one of your guitars. Everything that we're talking about and learning about you and your philosophies on things, to me, it it puts val this kind of intrinsic value into the item because I I feel like I can imagine already when I have it hanging in my living room, when I play it with my children, uh, when I write songs with it, all of this in my mind is, is part of of that instrument mm -hmm. you know and to well, me that's gratifying it, to hear well good it makes mm -hmm. it priceless mm -hmm. you know? so let's go back to um, you know you as a player 
with this. Uh, you're doing some recording stuff, you're playing for your own enjoyment, you're doing a variety of things. If you were playing strictly bluegrass, you'd probably want a real predominant bass, right? right? Uh, that's what people like in bluegrass. If you were doing classical or jazz, mm, you'd hate that guitar. Yeah. You'd want it very even, so you as the artist could decide what note's gonna be loud and soft, and you'd wanna make a guitar that was pretty even in the EQ. So with you, more towards the even, but slightly predominant bass, because that just sounds fuller mm. and better to us. So we're gonna start right here. Uh, uh, this top is not a uniform thickness because we're gonna start to control this bass and treble volume right here. You listen to the tone over all of this, but this can be a right-handed guitar, I assume. I am right-handed. Yeah, okay, good, yep. got that right. This, uh, uh, our treble string is gonna be on this side of the top, our bass string's on this side. So we're gonna start dialing in the distance between the volume of bass and treble here. I love that. This is... Um, I smelled this, it when you brought it out. Yeah, yeah that's, that's great. great. This is an old... This was from a, a, a tree that uh, was involved in a fire. And uh, this is uh, redwood, and it's, it's um, really, really, really antique. Here's a nice uh, uh, European. This comes from the Italian-Swiss border. Nice kind of glassy, yeah. you know, that really will showcase your playing style. So now uh, we're not listening to the high or low frequency, that's the EQ. Okay. We're listening to the bright or the clear. So these notes will be different, but you'll hear difference in the clarity. So this one, and then this one. So that, see how that's like not as edgy? Very different. I didn't yeah. expect it to be that different. Yeah, I was thinking, really man, I hope I hear the difference. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. It, it's really obvious. Yeah, that's music to my ears, because yeah. that's really gonna, that's really gonna be a good partner for me to play my yeah. guitar with. The woods will affect the tone, the brighter dark quality. That's what they do. Okay. Uh, contrary to internet folklore, they do not control bass versus treble. Okay, wow. This is uh, where we've glued braces on this, but we haven't done anything to them. We just cut them on a saw. Okay. And that's very much like the efficiency in a factory. You cut them to a size, you glue them on, you're done. So they're all just rectangular pieces of wood yeah, cut? Yeah, because stuff. we're gonna carve them to tune them and put them in harmony. And when you make 10 little blocks the same size, right from the same tree, right next to each other, they'll all ring at different frequencies or random frequencies because of the varying densities. Oh my goodness. And this is really why science has had the difficulty understanding the secret of a Stradivarius violin. They were looking at things they could observe and that was dimensions. Mm -hmm. They make a violin exactly like the old one and it doesn't sound so good, yeah. right? Uh, but they, they also take two Stradivari violins, they compare the dimensions and they're all over the place. Right, yeah. Because they weren't making it to a size, they were making it to a frequency. Yes, and they're really making a chord and making it in tune. And if anything, that's the biggest secret in quotation marks of uh, what the violin masters were doing. So this guitar is uh, what we're trying to do here, we're trying to enhance the bass. Um, a big guitar like a dreadnought is inherently bassy because the airspace is large and it's going to be more bass in the mix. A smaller guitar is going to be more even because the treble is going to be more. But you can gain that, you can change that. And that's what we've done here, this is counterintuitive. This is a little guitar which should be really even, let's say, or weak in the bass. But what we did here is uh, on, we're on the treble side here and the bass here because we're upside down. Remember, stiffness promotes treble, flexibility promotes bass. Wow. So what we did here on the treble is we took all this uh, material out, we weakened it, made it less stiff, and we dropped the treble volume. Goodness. 
Okay, on this, oh, out here in the base, we scoop this out to make this whole area more flexible, and that boosts the bass to bring this little guitar up to have a little bit predominant bass. Huh. If we wanted to go even further, we'd scallop these here and move these peaks out. So those are just like moving the sliders on a graphic equalizer to get the mix that's going to be right for this one customer's playing style. Well, it's a visual work yeah. of art. I mean, in it's pretty, itself. isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it's pretty. And one, one there's a, you know, there's a um, pride usually is it gets in the way of your results, and it's real expensive yeah, right. to, to entertain pride. Uh, but there is a gratification in doing nice, clean work oh, yeah. and knowing you're adding value yeah. you know truly making other people happy is the thing that really makes ourselves happy and in doing this work and thinking about the results for another is gratifying you know if you're just uh, putting in your time yeah not so much and I think so. in this country I'm happy to say that I believe there's been a rebirth in the appreciation of the artisan yeah. and everything from craft beer to guitars to yeah. anything like that whereas for a while for like you know a few decades maybe from the the 40s to the 90s Good choice yeah, yeah it was mm -hmm. like anything that was made by a giant manufacturer would be better and inherently better somehow versus now i think we're rediscovering that's really well put thank you yeah that's really well put artisans. i've lived in a awesome time and I've seen quite a you know a paradigm shift in the culture so uh, you know I was born not too long after World War II and th th man that was a that was a paradigm shift so uh, the world was at war and we won which means there was an explosion of consumerism mm -hmm. right uh, everything cars houses uh, guitars people are buying stuff because we were rich yeah. and uh, with that we really were into control uh, Martin went from a, a company about this size to, you know, yeah. in the folk scare, really, really, really grew. And that's why people uh, say pre-war Martin, pre-war Martin, right. pre-war Martin. Yeah, that was that was it. Uh, right. Before World War II, it, it, the, what the market demanded was a certain price, and and they evolved to that. After World War II, the market wanted more. Yeah, more, more. <laughs> they more, evolved more. to that. Yeah. When I first moved to Santa Cruz, um, uh, people were trying to. We call this a farmer's market now, but people were trying to sell food they grew, mm -hmm. and they're being arrested. Because what kind of an idiot would buy food that, that some just pulled out of the ground? It yeah. needs to be grown with um, uh, things to kill the disease and the weeds right. and sterilize. And everything we did was more and more controlled in that regard. And then... Even baby formula. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> versus, yeah, yeah. versus yeah. the natural That's why source, I'm the right? way I am. Yeah. Uh, but then everything changed. Uh, we call it the 60s, but it wasn't the 60s. It's somewhere between 1950-something and 1970-something. And people really reacted to that and started making their own stuff. Yeah. You know, uh, there was this myth of specialization. People didn't work on their guitars. They didn't have any connection with the food they ate, um, the machines that they used. And then it all changed and people wanted to start doing it themselves they blew up the myth of specialization people started doing pottery making candles making guitars mm -hmm. doing whatever learning how to work on their cars and today we see that uh more and more as part of the culture so you chose the 90s i'm choosing the sick what we call the 60s yeah. as that shift and and that's, well, that's because you live in california and i live in south carolina <laughs> it took a, it took a little right? while to get across the country yeah. there. but that yeah. really is it. and guitar making was no no different it's like Wow, how do they make these? I want to make one. Now the default on the OM we can look at, uh, we'll look at the catalog or online, and that is a, um, you know, a herringbone pattern around the top and also in the rosette. This is custom. It's got the violin purples here and it's got um, a little, uh, looks like maybe a little koa ring uh, around there. 
Um, so we'll look at the default and then you'll sell the guitars and you'll decide on that. What we did talk about here is abalone. Mm -hmm. So it would be these violin purples uh, bordering an abalone shell, which is appropriately and proportionately a little larger than what goes around here. It, it's balanced, it looks right. Okay, good. Yeah, that sounds great to me. And then the other things that would be default that we do if you didn't request is like the ebony bridge pins with the little mother of pearl dots. Um, you know, a real bone saddle, ebony bridge, ebony fretboard. Wow. Yeah, that's great. Okay. And a whammy bar, of course. Yeah. That's right. You can put, take that out of your hip pocket once you leave yeah, right. the shop. <laughs> hey, Will. Good morning, sir. Will's preparing all these little components to do the decorative binding oh, wow. on this. In the acoustic guitar, traditionally, the binding was a decorative, uh, protected the edge, and it looked nice. Mm -hmm. And that's really what it was for. In the violin tradition, that little black-white-black -black line that we see, that wasn't for decoration. That was to control the projection of the violin. Huh. Do you ever wonder how that little tiny hair space can acoustically cut through the orchestra and, and project all the oh, way back so in the concert? Wow. It's, it's magic. Yeah. Uh, they did a little groove, a little channel, right inside the side on the violin, and it was like, like uh, it was filled up with this purple that wasn't solid wood. The wood was ground up and rolled out like a fiber. So let's consider like a paper or cardboard. Okay. Yeah. You go, what that have to do with resonance? That's anti-resonance, mm -hmm. and that's what it was for. It blocked vibration from going from the top through this into the sides and the framework of the violin and directing volume at the player. Who cares what the violin sounds like behind it? You want to direct it out front. Oh, yeah. So that little purple, that fiber purple, uh, the vibration wouldn't move through it. And the only place we could go is back to the top, pump twice as much air that then went out the oh, wow. to the audience. Cool, huh? Yeah. So when when we use that purple on the top, we get the same effect. Mm -hmm. And it's it's cool, it's simple, it's kind of shaker looking. Yeah. But if you want to start marketing, you take that same sheet of black, white, black, and instead of cutting it off at 90 degrees, which gives you the purple, cut it about 30 degrees. And now the end's not square, it's a parallelogram. Take half of it, flip it upside down over here, and cut from this side, and we'll get our old pal herringbone. Oh, and that's what makes it look. Yeah. But it's doing the same job. Yeah, it's doing the same job. So now we have everything we want in the body, and uh, to make it functional, let's put a handle on it. Yeah, and that's yeah. what we're going to do over here. You know, let's say you play your guitar uh, for <laughs> decades, and uh, you want something much more sophisticated sounding, uh, but you sure want the familiarity of your neck shape, your contact. So we can, you know, we can copy uh, somebody's <laughs> Les Paul or uh, J200 or Martin D28, um, uh, or the vagaries in it. The, if it get beat up and bent and, and uh, uh, filled with Bondo, we can right. still get what they want. <laughs> uh, but also, there's a, a, a more and more people are aware of, of the the cost of repetitive motion, and maybe you have a guitar and it starts to cramp your hand or your arm gets numb after playing for a while. There's a lot more urgency ergonomic shapes than a lot of the traditional oh, wow. ones. So being, having the ability to completely carve a neck by hand means we can do whatever we want. So what will you have me do? Hold several guitars and play them and be like, um, that one feels good to uh, me? We'll start with your guitar. Well, and, I don't have and, it. Okay, well good. <laughs> we can do anything we want. Uh, no, what, what, uh, what I would do is uh, we take you through the tour here and get your confidence that we can achieve what we promise. Oh, you've and, had that before then, I okay, showed good, up here, good. yeah. And then I would uh, uh, direct you down to Sylvan Music here in Santa Cruz. Uh, Sylvan, they're old, old friends for many, many years, and they stock probably 25 plus of our guitars, and there's such a variety of custom here. You can go through a whole forest of, of necks, and you could probably find what you like. Or you could find a couple that were so close to what you like, you'd say, I want okay. uh, a mix between. And that's so personal. Yeah. You know, it's what feels good to you. And it's not just the shape, it's the width between the strings. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what's comfortable. Wow. Hey, hey, cool. you Mike? I am. Hey, I'm Jason Welcome. Broadwater, man. Nice, nice to, meet to meet you. you. Chris. Please make yourself at home. Try whatever you see. It's all here for playing. So 
So Richard, what am I holding? What are we talking about here? Well, what this has in common with what we're talking about in, uh, in our shop, um, you play an OM with a one and three quarter neck and you thought, now oh, that's comfortable. I like that string spacing. Your hand falls naturally into it. Everything's good, except um, the shape is kind of was kind of veed, and it didn't quite feel right in your hand. On the back, you had to squeeze a little yeah. too much to do it. Right. And I, right. let's go down to Sylvan and get a sample of one that is one and three quarter nut space, nut width, which is what you like, but with a rounded back, uh, hmm. more of a, a Gibson or old Gibson or jazz style neck. And so we found that combination, and you can actually play it and see what you think. So this is great. So we found the combination in a dreadnought, which we're not looking at a dreadnought, but the important thing here is how the neck feels to me. Yeah. You'll also, if you judge this sound, not only is a dreadnought going to be louder in the bass, but it's an Adirondack top, which is going to be a brighter, clearer. And we're talking about using Adirondack bracing on my That's guitar. right, but a Sitka top, because what we're doing is we're tempering that strident, bright Adirondack with um, mahogany back and sides and Sitka spruce. And that's called Adirondack bracing and high glue. We got bright and warm, which are going to bring you back more towards the metal. Which and is that's for the versatility that my that's style right. is asking. That's right. That's right. So you're not uh, at any extreme and limited in mu those musical styles. Um, all of the styles that you're playing will fit within that spectrum. I think just, just walking into the room and looking at the guitars visually, the guitars that call out to me are the darker burst yeah. and the all mahogany, which I don't want from a sound standpoint. Right, uh -huh. but you like the, but darker, the darker color tones yeah. with that. And that makes sense. So this is kind of what I, I, this is very much what I envisioned with you. I'm going to use a, a kind of a composite story about production. Okay. Um, uh, in production, of course, with, with price being the target. Um, and this is not the way y'all produce. No, this is to be not clear. Ours, yeah. yeah. Is uh, probably what's the most common one today, the state of the art and finish on guitars, would be a, um, a, a UV reactive um, uh, polymer. You spin it, suspend it in a solvent, you spray it on the guitar, shine UV light on it or ultraviolet light, bink, it gets hard, you know? Right, yeah. So uh, the advantage to the maker is that's a lot more profitable when you take less time. Right. And that can be passed on in the retail price to yeah. the player. Very good. Um, the drawback for us is it's, um, uh, it's a little heavy. You know, we tapped on that guitar that was tuned and it was like super resonant. Yeah. It'd be a shame to go backwards on yeah. what we put on it. Uh, the other one is it's not as uh, expensive looking as we need. In our price range, we really want it to look like a million bucks. Yeah. Okay? And then finally, um, it's not so restorable. You know, you break it, you could patch it up, but it'd be probably not worth the return on investment to make it look new again. Right. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, of course, the price, uh, a lot of goods we buy, not being concerned about its future because we've got a great deal. Right. Okay. So this stuff, instead of um, like polyester or uh, uh, polyurethane, it's the fibers of cotton again, our old friend cellulose. The guitar is made out of cellulose, as wood, and we're taking cellulose in cotton that's, that's dissolved in a solvent. We get clear liquid cellulose that's sprayed on the guitar, and when we're finished and the solvent is evaporated, it's, it's coated in what it's made out of. There's a compatibility of resonance, there's a, um, a super expensive look once it's polished, yeah. and if you break it, you can dissolve it and apply more lacquer, amalgamate new lacquer, make it look new again. Oh, wow. So all of those um, give such added value. That's the stuff for us. So Richard, I hate that you threw this away. It looks like a really <laughs> nice guitar case. What, what a great um, opening, like I paid you for this. Uh, anything we don't make, we couldn't get the quality that was uh, uh, consistent with the guitars we're making, so we have designed, spec'd out, and have made for us uh, those elements. Uh, one of them is a case. So you all have this, you designed this yeah, case? Yeah, uh-huh. Wow. Yeah, it's, um, 
It's beautiful, by it's the way. Made, and it's made specifically, it's made by a company uh, whose specialty is cases for uh, portable medical equipment and oh, scientific wow. equipment. And uh, yeah, that's where you have to go to get uh, this kind of quality. There's always one more left. I know, you're all good over uh, here. Okay, where are we? You might be good there to open. Go. Oh my gosh. Dude, it, this is 3,500 years old. <laughs> this, that is the old ancient spruce, you're right. And this is gorgeous. It, isn't it just? It's over the top beautiful. Okay. The tree of life kind of yeah. inlay stuff, that is gorgeous. This is, um, this is a power shell. It's a little abalone that comes from New Zealand and it's farmed. Uh, so it's a sustainable thing. Uh, we actually have more regulations on seashell than we do on uh, Brazilian rosewood. Wow. And uh, so we can feel good about this too. It's sustainable. This is beautiful. I mean, pretty? minus the ungodly expensive top, um, <laughs> this is the kind of thing I'm imagining. Uh, and, I'm, and, and probably, I know this is probably all crazy expensive too, but I'm just saying mm -hmm. it's just, just beautiful. It's just beautiful. I love, what kind of wood is this? This is a, a, a figured Indian rosewood and let's pull this out. Oh, and it's carefully. got the matte neck on the back too? Uh, yeah, it does. And this is a, a, a cool looking Indian rosewood kind of fantasy uh, figure on it. Wow. Um, and yeah, does the customer's request the neck is uh, uh, matte. Which is cool. I like that. Yeah. And this is, uh, we can hear this if you like. This is um, I, I'm cautious here. I don't want to sound boastful about it. Uh, I want to. I want to be more specific in that. What this is is this is made for somebody that couldn't have got this combination of stuff and the elements of sound and the quality of sound in one guitar if they looked a lifetime. Yeah. You know, and that's our specialty to build this, uh, not because we're uh, uh, more gifted or talented people. This is what we choose to do. We have close to half a century of practice in doing it. It's and amazing. We, and we're based on the principles of millennia of violin building to achieve yeah. that consistency. And it looks good too. <laughs> so I love that kind of tree of life thing. The, yeah. That kind of stuff is really beautiful and fantastic. And I guess we wouldn't have a logo up here. Um, it could be plain or you could have something iconic. You could have your um, uh, pet falcon or your golf clubs. Or, you know. <laughs> the only limits on, on cosmetics is um, uh, that it's uh, physically possible to do and it's somewhere in the bounds of good taste. Right. Yeah. You know, that's what, <laughs> right. Because it'll represent us no matter exactly, what. Exactly, yeah. When it gets out there. Richard, I can't tell you enough, man. It's truly an honor to meet you. It's an honor to meet Carolyn, to meet the whole team, to see the way you guys work, um, it, it, taking us to the to the woods, um, you know, to, treating us like family while we're here. It's just been an incredible experience, and and of course, you know, selfishly, I mean, it's the experience of a lifetime that you're going to work with me to to build a guitar. It's just it just couldn't have been better. So thank you for everything. We appreciate it. Uh, Jason, my pleasure. You, you guys were like family. You treated us um, uh, respectfully. We had a blast, you know. I got to do some of my favorite things, you know, go in the woods, talk about guitars. And, uh, you know, that's really my big gratitude here is not only do we get to make guitars for a living, which is pretty dreamy, uh, but the people we deal with are, are they come in happy, they leave happier, mm -hmm. uh, they're tolerant, they're forgiving, and God knows we need that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And so that is really gratifying. Mm -hmm.